Citizens of Ulrika, my name is Marlies Henderson and I am one of the co-petitioners for Spring Town Meeting Article 38. Article 38 is a 23-page MBTA Communities Zoning Amendment to be added to the Ulrika Zoning Bylaw. Perhaps with this five-minute BATV production I can shed some light on the warrant article. I'm not urging you to vote yes or no. This production serves to inform and raise awareness. Do I love this MBTA community zoning? No, but it is mandated by the state to address a housing crisis. And it took the planning board team, staff, consultants, residents, 10 months to get to this point. If the 23 pages of dry legal words seem unappetizing to you, I can sympathize. But part of the discomfort is fear of the unknown. Education is key. And after I familiarized myself with this MBTA community's beast, I could see potential and even advantages for Bilrica. 177 Massachusetts municipalities are dealing with this so-called MBTA zoning. What is it about? MBTA Communities Zoning is a response by the state to the current housing crisis. We all know young folks who can't afford to move out of their parents' house or aging folks on a fixed income who can't afford to live in the community where their social life is. To solve the problem at its root, the state intends to influence supply and demand. Well, since there's no legal way to change demand, we can't eliminate families looking for housing. Legislators wrote a bill to change multifamily housing supply. This bill was enacted by Governor Baker in 2021, and Governor Healy started the implementation of Mass General Law, Chapter 40A, Section 3A. According to guidelines published by the Executive Office of Housing and Livable Communities, Section 3A compliance zoning districts meet strict requirements and criteria. To clarify, Mass General Law Chapter 40A Section 3A is nicknamed MBTA Communities, which has nothing to do with the lower line other than that the Act seeks to reduce car use by locating neighborhoods near transit. The law seeks to encourage transit, walkability and bikeability. Additionally, Mass General Law Chapter 40A Section 3A is a law with teeth. If an MBTA community does not comply, state grants can and will be lost. The community can even be sued by the state. On the other hand, if a community abides by the law, state grant funding will remain available. In other words, Article 38 is not about an option to adopt an act. This is about a law which already applies to us. As I mentioned, over the past 10 months, the planning board staff and consultants have worked on this state mandated bylaw. It was a step by step phased process of analysis and elimination, narrowing the proposal down to the required capacity of units. Capacity only. Existing units in the overlay district count towards that capacity. The phased timeline as presented in June 2023 had the goal to keep the town in compliance. On schedule, staff submitted draft language in December 2023 for the 90-day preliminary compliance review by the Executive Office of Housing and Livable Communities, EOHLC. In the meantime, outreach to the public continued with regular Ask the Planner sessions, a public forum at the Marshall School and one at the Haja School. Unfortunately, on March 11, it was almost midnight. A planning board majority voted against creating a placeholder on the preliminary warrant. Four opposed it, two were in favor, and I was absent. The content or substance of a preliminary warrant article placeholder is a draft and not set in stone. 
with a possibility to withdraw. And I personally think it was a mistake to vote no. On March 15, four days after the vote, the state completed its review of our zoning bylaw draft. The town is still in compliance and not deficient. This was a thorough process. The proposal has been fully vetted, meaning that there have been public hearings, public forums, particularly in the impacted neighborhoods, right where the overlays are located. By the way, if I say fully vetted, I should add that vetted does not guarantee that everyone loves the proposal. I do see advantages. Just imagine revamped mill buildings, a revitalized North Berwicka Mill District. So many opportunities. But here we were, not even a placeholder for the warrant, due to a divided planning board. However, thankfully, per the Town Charter 2-12 Section B, any elected town officer, including a member of a multiple member body, like the planning board, can submit a warrant article. And this is what Chris Trubeau did. Ed Giroux and I co-signed the placeholder for what is now Article 38. Unless we decide to withdraw it, town meeting can discuss it and vote on it this spring. If it passes, it won't go into effect until the end of this year and we move forward, perfecting it and fine-tuning it. Some claim that if it passes, we will be stuck with it forever. No. Just like any other local zoning bylaw, town meeting can later vote to amend, to remove, whatever. Oh, and citizens, be aware that the similarly worded petitioner Article 39 with a different zoning district was not vetted nor reviewed by the state. And if it were reviewed, it would not meet the strict requirements and criteria. This has been verified. Article 38 reflects what the planning board worked on as a team for 10 months. We only have five months left till fall town meeting, which is the last chance to pass zoning bylaw changes to remain compliant by December 31 this year. The draft was vetted and stayed reviewed. That preliminary review came back with two minor adjustments, not in the bylaw language draft, but in cross-referencing the existing zoning bylaw. These issues have since been addressed. Regardless of planning board recommendations, in the end, it's up to town meeting representatives to approve or deny this zoning bylaw change. I hope these facts help make an informed voting decision. Thank you. Thank you.